I wasn't enjoying sex because all I was thinking about was like, oh God. That's why I think sex is actually so much better after you're, having you children together. Because you don't just care. Like, you're, you're having just like, a great whatever. time. The way I was in college being like, whatever. No, no, I was inhibited in college. I was like, I wanted the you laundry. Want I wanted the right. thing. The lighting I, I to be a certain way. The lighting. Get up and go brush your teeth and reapply before he wakes up. And then you say, I am the one person in the world who never has morning breath. <laughs> <laughs> Being a mom is the toughest job there is, and it doesn't come with instructions. So it's okay if you don't have all the answers. We'll figure it out together. This is Mom Brain with Ilaria Baldwin and Daphne Oz. Hi, this is Sarah Foster. I am mother to two daughters, Valentina and Josephine. I am an actress, a writer, a producer, and investor, and head of creative at Bumble. Uh, right, boobs. Yeah, boobs. So, um, we were we were laughing because we saw on Sarah's Instagram that she which posted, is hilarious. which is so and funny, so much fun. that she posted this photo of her husband liking a photo of this woman with like gigantic fake, like obviously very very fake moves, and she's like, "Alrighty then." <laughs> and so we were laughing about that because that's it's very. But it's not even like it was beautiful scenery that you could go no, it was like just oh, boobs. it was a it was close just boobs. up of her boobs. Yeah. <laughs> Which, which, <laughs> wait, no, wait, here's my question. But like, really, pull the curtain back for it. Did he know that you were going to see that he'd like this photo? No, because I think this was right when the feature rolled out, where you can see Who people likes. you follow, like their like, you can mm-hmm. see that, right? That mm-hmm. wasn't always on Instagram. Right. I think it was like, that was like the day the new feature rolled out. I don't know. No, he definitely didn't think that I was. But your see friends it. were sending it to you being like, hey. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> my sister sent it to me. Oh, thank you. She's like, well, that's, this is cool. I mean, it's really like, but like, what is the line? Like we talk about all the time, like is watching porn inappropriate in a marriage Mm -hmm. is like, I don't know. What's the line alone or watching porn together? Watching porn alone. Yeah. Like I don't, you know, I, I, I'm okay with it. I I don't really want to know about it. I don't want to walk in on you doing it, Right. but I'm not going to put my foot down. Like you're not allowed to do that. I mean, guess what? They're going to do whatever they want. Anyways. That's my fear is if you have to, if you have to be the one to put the foot down, in anything, you're just driving it underground. It's not like it doesn't exist anymore. You're just making it subterranean, which I think makes it way more toxic than being like, if that's a real thing and you want to address it by being like, great, let's have more sex or let's, yeah. you know, whatever. We'll figure if you if you really can't tolerate the idea of, you know, other people being introduced to your sex life, there are ways around. Maybe there are ways to discuss that in other ways. But I think just being like, well, you can't do it, but I'm not going to change anything that I'm doing doesn't well, like a porn addiction is one thing, right? That's like there's levels thing. of it. But like, I don't know. I guess there's a healthy amount of porn. To watch. I, I don't really know. I mean, I think but, it all depends on what the what the individual is comfortable with. And But you know what's hard? And I always tell my girlfriends, like who, who are not married or at the beginning of their marriage or dating or whatever, whatever it girlfriends. is. I see. <laughs> <laughs> I have like seven. Um, is that you don't want to try to force somebody to want to be with you, to want to live by your standards. You want to pick somebody who is going to have a lot of the same ideas because you don't want to be like stressed out of like, oh, he's texting this girl or he's looking at this or he's going here. That's so stressful. You want to get to the point where you're like, hey, I know you want me. I want you. Life is really difficult. So let's just at least have that part all set. And then we can feel grounded and we can do it all together. Yeah, that would, that would take years off your life. It was years. Living in a years. relationship like that. But the problem is when people get married and they th- either think, oh, he's going to change. It will be different once we're married. It will be different once we have kids. Um, he'll calm down a little bit. Or they find things out when they're already married and have kids. And then it's like, well, do we try to change? Do people change? Mm-hmm. Do we try therapy? It gets to be, it gets to be complicated because are you just forcing an underground and forcing into a lying Why pattern? Why do you always, I mean, I remember like dating in college, my mom would say things to me. We would have whole conversations around male, female dynamic, period. Just around, like, I think I have a very, um, just... You know, I think there. I think everyone has a balance of masculine and feminine in them. I think I have a strong degree of masculinity <laughs> in terms of just like being happy to, you know, be the leader when I need to be and and whatever. I think it's because I'm the oldest of four. Um, but I, you know, I also remember meeting my husband and and like his masculinity allowing me to be more feminine, but at the same time he is really in touch with his emotional side too, which is part of why we work so well because he like 
at the, when we met, I was so unintouched with that. I was so difficult to pry into. I was so like that annoying, horrible person who would like sulk until you came to me and asked me what was wrong as opposed to just being like, I really fucking didn't like it when you said that to me or whatever, you know? Um, and my mom would talk about how you have to, you're the only person you can control. You have to change your behavior if you want someone else's behavior changing. By the way, you can't do it with the intention of changing their behavior because you don't, again, you can't control what their response will be. But it has always stuck with me with this idea of like, if there's something you don't like that's not working, rather than fixating on someone else or trying to change them or, you know, doing all the things to try to manipulate them to do what you want, try start with yourself first mm -hmm. and see what you could be doing differently to get the result that you want. Um, so anyway, going back to porn. And marriage, <laughs> bringing it but on. also sounds like you met someone that brought out the best in you, mm -hmm. which is similar to me. I was the way I was because I was in, I was in relationships with men who brought out the worst in the me. Worst. They made me insecure. They made me question everything. Mm -hmm. I was with guys I'd wake up before they woke up to like put makeup on. I mean like crazy. And then I met Tommy and it wasn't that I necessarily changed. It's just that he really brought out this other side of me because yeah. he didn't trigger me in ways that other men had triggered me so when people were like oh my god you've changed so much I'm like I don't know if I've changed so much I'm just finally with someone that brings out the better side of me and doesn't trigger all those emotions that bring out the worst in you right I think that's totally fair and and by the way every day you get older you you uncover those parts of yourself that you kept that were that were just like you know behind the other parts because you felt like those had to be front facing but i i totally agree if you're if you don't feel like you constantly need to protect yourself or be in this tight shot when's your birthday february 5th february 17th i really? knew you were an aquarius really yeah <laughs> um but i do i think i think there's a shell or like a protective mechanism that you want to have and and i think being with the right person allows you to shed a lot of that and allows you to be more authentic to yourself and allows you to feel safe in that um and not want to cage them yeah you don't want to cage right. your right. man when you feel good you don't want to cage them i mean the times that i would say to tommy or even boyfriends before him, like, go out, have fun, like, have a guy's night. It made them just want to come home earlier. But yes. when I was going, like, you better get your ass home yes. by 10 o'clock, he's going like, oh, really? <laughs> All right. I'll, this, these are, this is like human nature. This is just in a man's DNA, yes. right? Like, they want to resist In that. all of our DNA. In like, all if of anyone ours. tries to control you, you're like, what? I'm not your child. No. <laughs> you know, like, I, and, and. I also found that when I was having when I when I would be like suspicious in relationships or jealous or just a total freak, it was because I was having inappropriate like feelings about other people totally. or thinking about someone else or being overly it's flirtatious. Your conscience talking. It was my I, I mm -hmm. was I was assuming they were feeling the same way I was feeling, which is so interesting also because it is the more judgmental and controlling and like the more you try to impose your will on them, the less likely they are to cooperate. But at the same time with all of this, I think it's okay to have certain ground rules in relationships. Totally. And I think that it's okay to, you But you're you not know, setting those your, in a vacuum. You have those for each you, other and you together. You want them to want the same ground rules. Exactly. And, and not just, you know, even if they, like, like here's, here's an example. So when I, when Alec and I first started dating, I was teaching yoga like all the time, like 36 classes. And he would get, uncomfortable when I would adjust because I go and like do like very deep adjustments and I would adjust these men and he would be like you know you're literally putting your hands on these guys asses in a very like yoga like hands yeah. fingers spread like very you know this this is what you get TSA taught. pat down stuff. exactly yeah very like <laughs> there's nothing sexual about it at all but um but he basically asked me to not do that and it was one of those things where I'm like Okay, I can live with that. That being that being said, I also, as he started, you know, when he would do movies, and I'm like, you're getting paid to go to work to make out with another woman. Interesting. That's weird. And so he won't do movies anymore or or jobs anymore where he does that. But it was something that Is we that both why he understood. On my pilot last year. <laughs> Must have been. <laughs> we offered him a pilot last pilot season. We wrote him letters. We were oh, like really? calling anyone that knew him. We were like, oh. we were literally my my sister scene? wrote it for Alec Baldwin. Oh, really? No, it's like a Fox half hour. Oh. She literally wrote it for Alec. I mean, of course, like knowing he probably wouldn't do a network TV anymore. But we were like, please, please. There was a kissing scene, so he passed. <laughs> No, but you can, what's so interesting is you can, you can go around that. You can be like, yeah. okay, well, we can just rewrite that part. It's not so much that, but, but I mean, I like 
some people would be like, well, it's your husband's job. He's an actor. I'm like, well, it's your job too. Okay. But doing well, how your- would you like your husband going to work, getting paid and making out with another woman all day and then coming home and yeah. then sharing the same, you know, kissing him, having him also just in terms of cleanliness wise, having him share food with your kids. Yeah, oh, well. yeah. Think about it that way. But I, I, I appreciate that, that he gave you sort of, he put a boundary on you and you put it right back on him. Like, I love that because a lot of, you know, we need to do that as women because mm-hmm. it's exactly the same thing. It's only, it's only fair. And when, and you ultimately, you want your spouse or your person, you want them to feel comfortable and confident at the end of the day. I don't want to, I never want to make Alec feel bad. Do I make him feel bad sometimes? Absolutely. It's inevitable. He makes me feel bad sometimes. Yeah. That's the nature of relationship. But I never want him to feel bad. And I, you know, if he tells me, hey, you know what? It really bothered me when you did. Da, 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 da. I'm going to try to look at myself and do it better next time. Maybe I get pissed off or something. I'm like, what are you talking about? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> but no, but I, I, think, I think honesty is the most, it's the only thing you cannot, there's no substitute for it. Like you, you can't have people couching things. You can't have people... Again, also, like, I don't want a sulker. I don't want someone who wishes I would do something differently and doesn't tell me. Like, mm-hmm. I want, oh. I would so much rather the open communication. There's nothing don't worse. Don't make me guess, you know. The, because uh, that feels terrible. I mean, I know, like, you, we, it just <clears throat> eats you alive when you're in those relationships and you're like, oh, my God, he went out. He did this. What do you think happened? Did he cheat on somebody? Did he kiss somebody else? Did whatever? Did they text? Did, or the, even sometimes this is as bad. If they gave the impression to somebody that that was possible. Mm. And then you have that whole thing of well, like, oh. Oh, you about think flirtation though like how do you no, it's not okay no no flirtation. no not good. this is like this is like again life is difficult and you and I have four kids you're gonna have four kids you have two kids you know that's that's hard you don't need to go other places like this is us we are so much some buena people and we're a good team we have that written on our wedding rings are you that Latin? is what it is are you, my family lives in Spain I love it it's very light it's I, listen <laughs> It. You're like, this is my man. This is how it's gonna be. <laughs> this is what it's gonna be. I mean, I am like quite different. You know, I, I, I think, I think ultimately you have to. We talk about it all the time. If you have the trust, it just it boils down to that. At the end of the day, Tommy's a professional. He retired last year, but a professional tennis player who is on the road or it was been on the road our entire relationship wow. with some of the hottest female tennis players, wearing nothing, like sweating profusely around him all day. Like I can't. <laughs> I can't, like, be on top of that. No pun intended. I mean, I have a life, too. Like, if I didn't feel like you'd drive yourself crazy, you would drive yourself nuts. You just, that's just no way to live. Look, I'm going to be really honest with you. Do I think deep down that Tommy, like, I am the only woman when he closes his eyes at night? I mean, is this our rate? Can we say whatever we want? You can say whatever you want. That he's, like, jerking off to me all the time? Like, do I think I'm the only woman in the world he's attracted to? No, I don't. But weirdly, I think you probably are. I'm definitely not. But like, but I'm okay with that because I do know I never worry. Like I know that he does not stray because he doesn't want to mess up what he has. Yeah. I think his instinct as a male is probably to go like, oh God, like that would be fun. Like I'm sure he has those thoughts. I'm okay with that. Yeah. I don't think he acts do on you, them. But do you have those thoughts? Do you feel like it's a two way street where women can do that too? Listen, I'm going to be really honest. I'm just not like that sexual of a person. It's it's weird. I can, I never have been. I've only been with like six guys my entire life. I've always had long-term relationships. It's emotional more than it's physical. It's totally more emotional <laughs> for me. So I don't like walk into a room and go, oh my God, that guy's so hot. Like <laughs> what I would do to him. Like I just, but like, I'm sorry, men, men have that brain. It's just different. See, I think, so we I have somewhere in the sex ed, ed like class that I went to, and I think that most women growing up, I was born. 86 like growing up in the 90s went to I was I believed up until I had a real boyfriend that men like just walked around with a boner all the time that they were like that like if you touched them in any and like I w- I thought that like every time a guy got a massage that it was something sexual yeah well like, when they are teenagers it is <laughs> that is on but, but I, <laughs> I love it men just walking around with a boner <laughs> like this is a thing but I was so naive so naive but also I think that we had this weird kind of bifurcation of male versus female sexuality that men are this ticking time bomb they can like a goat could rub their leg and they would think that was hot you know and then where women are like you know prim and and if you have sexual thoughts you're you know something you know something you're you're not prude and I think 
I don't think they're that different. And that's why I said, I think you probably are the only woman he's fantasized about because maybe he brings in like other parts of female bodies he's seen along the way. He like, you know, throws whatever on you, but <laughs> glimpses. Yeah, like glimpses. glimpses of like a different ass. Like, I don't know. Her but, forearm was so great. Yeah, her, yeah. her forearm, her backhand. Her oh, she's finger. finger. <laughs> exactly. I really do think they have a similar attachment, at least after a long-term relationship, to um, the mental and emotional connection that they only have with their totally. partner Agreed. that's different. Um, and by the way, guys, women cheat too. Like, mm-hmm. of course. This is not, I mean, I, I got to be honest, like a lot of people sort of, not in my circle, but like I hear about the women yeah, more than the men. I think the men have more of a fear of messing up the home life. Like when they have a good home life, like it's hard to want to mess that up. Yeah. I men also are think simple. cheating is, again, another thing I thought as a kid that proved to be totally ridiculous was that I thought cheating was this like lustful, like moment of passion, blah, blah, blah. And I think for most people, cheating is like, I feel deeply unfulfilled or unappreciated and I'm, or really insecure. And I'm going to go out and try to find the fulfillment I need elsewhere. And I think I think the emotional fulfillment that women do need is the thing that's most easily to miss in, in a bad marriage yeah. and or a bad partnership of any kind. And I think that's why it's that's why it is. It's just as likely that women will stray as men will. But um, but I do think I think that um, having that sort of parity in a relationship is really interesting. And having that, like I want let me put it this way. I want my husband to feel wanted by other women. Like I want him to mm-hmm. feel I think he feels you think you feel good about yourself. Like I think I want him to feel attractive. I want him to feel uh, dynamic. I want him to feel all these things. So I think it brings out the best in him for himself. But I also want him to like obviously never disrespect me or our family. And I know that he never would. And, the, and then none of the women can ever know that they would think that that would ever happen. Correct. And I, that's exactly right. There, there is that barrier there still. Because that is disrespect. How do you find your relationships changed from when you were just you dating or just you married to after you had your kids? Oh, wow. I mean, listen, I became a mom and I did like exactly what I never thought I'd do, which is become all about my daughter. You know, I breastfed for two and a half years. She never slept in a crib. She slept with me every single night. And that's hard in a marriage. You know, Mm -hmm. it's hard when your partner is going like, come on, like, let's go away for two nights. And I'm like, are you crazy? I have this baby that needs me. I can't leave her at all. And I think that was hard for him. I think on one hand, like, he was like, I love that she's such a good mom. Like, I didn't have a baby nurse. I I had really nothing. I was just, I, I was very selfish before I had children. I needed my sleep. Like, I didn't, I had no idea what to expect. I was terrified. And something just clicked in me that I just, I didn't even know that I had access to those emotions or that, or those feelings. And our relationship suffered from it. It, it, it really did. And we've been together 14 years. And I'm glad that we had all the time that we had before our daughter. But it was really, it was really hard. I still to this day like my kids sleeping with me. He doesn't, you know, not that he doesn't, but he's very much about like, this is our bed. And I'm like, but no, because when they come in, I, I just. And it's such a precious time in their lives. I know. I, and it's going to go by. So, it will go by. It, it, will, it go goes away. by so fast. So we fight about it. I'm not going to lie. Like he's definitely spent many a nights in the guest room. And that's not healthy for a relationship. You know, like when my daughter will wake up, she's like, oh, did dad sleep downstairs? I'm like, yes, he did. <laughs> You know, and those things come up and it's, it's, it's not easy, but I've completely changed and our, and our relationship has changed and it's gotten deeper and stronger. And I think, um, he sort of, I think when you have children, you look at each other different, like nothing melts me more than seeing him with the kids. Like I love him in a way that I, I didn't love him before. I I thought I loved him so much before, but then when I see him with the kids and being such a stable, good parent, um, it makes me like definitely love him more. I think that vulnerability that you get uh, going through childbirth, certainly well, going through pregnancy, probably getting into it, but also going through childbirth birth in specific, you stop having any of the insecurities or in or the, the like, there's no more barriers between you. Like you've really been laid bare for each other. And, and yeah, there's nothing, nothing better than seeing fathers with their kids and seeing how that bond is different than yours. It's always going to be different than a mother and child's bond, but it's also, um, you know, I'll tell you what didn't change though. You know, I had both of my kids vaginally Mm -hmm. and he was like down there for both of them. And I mean, I had heard so many friends say to me, like, 
be careful about that because our sex life has changed. There's just something about when a man sees that that your like your vagina is no longer this like sexual organ. It's like this thing that like birthed a baby that some men, I guess, understandably, they don't know how to sort of separate that. And I, so I thought about it and I was like, well, I, you know, I'm going to I'm going to take a chance because I he wanted to be there and I wanted him to be there. And I got to say, like, nothing has but, changed. You know, nothing Alec has changed. I, no, which is Alec great. I, I didn't know. I had a conversation about that because I Did was Did you have an actual to, conversation about it? I'm, 100%. I talk about everything yeah. with him. So I had this whole idea that it was like, all right, there's church and state. You just keep the, your eyes right here, right here the entire time. Oh, so and you then went I into realized, it like that, thinking you don't look down there. Don't look down there. They, okay. what, they tried to give me a mirror. I was like, get the fuck Oh, you know, I didn't want a mirror. How about a birth video? Nope, no birth video. No, no, me neither. There's He takes a video right after the baby comes out, then he'll start taking a video as they put the baby on my chest for the first time it's like my favorite possessions ever so anyway but then I realized as you're like laying there especially because I'm quite a small person I like have my I'm legs very flexible. up you know, one, very, I'm, very there's trendy. not that much difference between church and state it's like just a matter of like a foot and a <laughs> half or two feet from me that so, I'm, thinking, so I'm in this funny. situation and I'm like Shit, I didn't think about this. But inevitably, he's going to see it all. He's going to see it all. Yeah. But what he tells me, because even towards the end of pregnancy, for anybody who has had kids, which I assume all of you guys who are listening are probably right now. Not right always. Now. We yeah. have lots of people who are, people like, are, oh, yes, interested yes, true, in motherhood. True story. True story. <laughs> um, yes, people are not interested in <laughs> Is that um, you just start looking so differently at towards the end of pregnancy, and then everything, it just looks completely different. Like the vagina, the or vagina. just your body? Their vagina, everything. And everything then it goes right down back, that. Which and is then crazy. it goes right back, which is crazy, which is completely <laughs> crazy. And <laughs> we've got certainly new, after the lightsaber he's treatment, new. It he's does. brand new with us. You're not used to these, like, <laughs> but it's wild how it goes right back from what it looks no, like it goes to what back, it is. But that was what he said. He yeah. says it's just like a completely different yeah. body. Yeah. He says, and he does get like a little freaked out towards the end of the pregnancy. It's weird. But. I just, I just always had the presumption that like he would do what he wanted to do. I didn't wait. I like never even dawned on me to have a conversation of. You didn't think about it? No. Was he down there? Did you have yeah, I mean, he, he holds my legs. To be honest with you, I'm never thinking about where his eyes are. I I'm just know. like, what the fuck? It's happening in my body right now. Um, but I, I'm sure he's looked. I mean, I, I, but I don't think that that's. I mean, he's, he's down there. I'm sure whatever else are you going to look. And he's been the one to pull the babies out. So I think oh, wow. he, so, yeah, yeah. So he has seen it. Yeah. yeah that's really destructive they, to me. What Alex said is it just looks so, I mean, I haven't seen it because I won't look at the mirror. But he says it just looks like a completely National Geographic. Different, exactly. Like it's just a guys, completely it, your different Your vagina body. grows like that. I mean, I mean, it's how is that crazy. even possible? I don't, I don't, I don't understand. I don't know. And, that's, and I, you know what? If I ever have any more kids, I still won't know. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I do. But look, that's part of it, too, is like we talked extensively with some people who uh, who were, you know, gratefully very open about it. Because I think it's a really important, critical part of happy parenting is having is feeling supported. And, uh, and if you're in a marriage or you're in a relationship, part of feeling supported is having good physical intimacy. And people feel like their sex life is the first thing to go. Like I have friends who literally don't have sex for years mm. after having and a kid. And they stay together. And they stay together. And and I think do that. Do think a man can go years I having, don't. I, I, I don't I, think I so. Tell honestly, you, and I struggle th- with this with my girlfriends. Like <clears throat> my girlfriends will say to me, "We haven't slept together in like six months." And I want what I want to say is like, you know, honey, y- your husband is probably f-ing someone else. I'm sorry to tell you. Like it's a, it's, yes, okay. Sometimes they're not. I don't think a man can go a year without having sex. Can they? I, I don't know. I, 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 I don't Maybe know. Maybe they can. There, I don't, there I don't are all these incels now that, that yeah. you know, wait, the wait. whole Alec involuntary was telling me this celibate whole thing. situation. Wait, there's what? Yeah. Incels. So involuntary celibates where they believe, tell me if I'm right, they believe that women are becoming so independent that they are making men celibate. They're making them celibate. They can't basically get laid because women are like now like, you know, super feminist. We should have the same rights as men and this whole thing. So men now will always find and they're getting to like, yeah, exactly. It's always I mean, women's fault, right? Um, we, <laughs> so now they're getting all this plastic surgery to try to make themselves more handsome. That's what Alex Oh, I hadn't me. heard about this yeah. latest, Wait, the latest thing. That. Something like that. They're trying to, like, they're putting in, like, all these, like, chin implants. See, I, I, like I, I don't know that much about it. I just, I literally read an article about it. But it was, it was, it was sad, actually. It was sad about this idea that there were people who, that had no physical interaction with anyone had, I mean, th- there was this whole, like, cuddling phenomenon of professional cuddlers just to have, like, a human touch, basically, oh, that feels not romantic, but affectionate, which is different than massage, cuddle. you know? I don't think I'd want to cuddle with someone. <laughs> a stranger? <laughs> I know. Bizarre. No. 
I understand, but there. But the point is, physical intimacy for humans is paramount. You ha- you have to have it. And so anyway, I think it's really important to talk about sexuality in a marriage and intimacy in a marriage because you are your body does change and you feel differently about yourself as a result of seeing your body go through those changes and certainly like it's you're really hormonal after giving birth some people are really uncomfortable still after giving birth like it's understandable that you would not necessarily be the like sex fiend that you may have one time been Um, well that's why I got a boob job Okay, so to, oh, oh yes, boob go job. Back, okay, we need to yeah. everything about the boob job. Did, wait, did you get it done after having kids? Yeah, I got it done. Are you done after having both children? of them? Well, no, I did it after my first okay. because could you breastfeed with them? So my first, <laughs> so many my I know. So my <laughs> first, um, I had so much milk. I can't even tell. I breastfed her for two and a half years, which. I had very small boobs to begin with. And so after breastfeeding on demand for two and a half years, they were like empty sockets. Yes. I mean, it was like, and it wasn't even, I've never even cared about boobs. If I did, I would have gotten a boob job when I was like 18 or 19 when I was like become like trying to act and like, all, right. I would have done it then if I, but it, boobs were never even on my radar. I just never had any and I was fine with it. But there's a difference between being flat and then being like, down to like here. saggy skin. Yeah. Like it was brutal. So Tommy was like, I really don't want you to do it. He's like, why do you want to do it? Like, I don't want you to do it. So why would you do it? I'm like, well, because I feel like inhib, like I feel, un- no, I feel inhibited. In- inhibited, in- inhibited, yeah. During like sex. Like mm-hmm. I, I don't like, I want to wear a t-shirt. Like it just, does, I, I keep my bra on. Yeah. Now. I'm like, I don't feel free. And like, I think part of sex, part of what makes sex good is free, being free. Right. When you're like, I think that's why I think sex is actually so much better after childbirth because you don't care. Together, you're, you don't just care. Like, you're, you're just like, you're having a great whatever. time. You're like, so uh, the op- the way I was in college being like, whatever, like, yeah, it's like let one leg goes here. The other, like, that's like what? No, no. I was in. I was inhibited in college. I was like, I wanted the you laundry. Want I wanted the, right, thing. the lighting I to be a certain way. Way. The lighting. You sleep with your makeup on. I no, I didn't. Well, actually, I did. You would sleep I wanted with your makeup like, on. The life filter Get up on. and go brush your teeth and reapply before <laughs> he wakes up. <laughs> no, 100%. Full Miss and then you say, style. I am the one person in the world who never has morning breath. <laughs> <laughs> so critical. Any ex-boyfriends who are listening to this now, you know <laughs> now my you know secrets. Secret. <laughs> <laughs> but no, totally. It is, it, you want to, you need to be able to feel that way about yourself. Yeah. Again. And I just, I wasn't enjoying sex because all I was thinking about was like, oh God, Mike, I, it's like, I'm embarrassed. Yeah. And he's like you know, when you're together with someone for so long, I, I love that. He was like, well, if you do it, like I won't even get you an Advil. Like he was pissed. Cause I think for a man, it yeah. triggers something in them. They're like, I'm confused. If I don't care, who are you doing this for? Yeah. And I'm like, uh, nobody I, for myself. myself, I'm doing it for myself. And he was really pissed about it. But the truth is I, I kind of regret it. A, I regret it because I loved breastfeeding and it was harder with my second, but I'll tell you why, because um, I did it through the nipple, which I, I don't recommend doing that. The doctor I went to, that's how he does it. Mm-hmm. But I, I, I swear to God, like, A, I'm not nearly as sensitive anymore. Like, it's almost like desensitized, which that's awful. Awful. Like, having... Robbing the best Awful. Part. Robbing, <laughs> exactly. And um, so, I, like, I don't know. Okay. I'm but- actually not that happy I did it. Well, they look great. They Thanks. do look great. Um, well, no, but I, you know what I would have done, which people do now, is... Um, which it, it was, this wasn't around five years ago, but like a fat, they put your own fat yes. into your boobs, which is just makes a little bit more natural, but that I, I didn't even know about but that. But does your body metabolize good. that? No. Like, does it make it go away? Well, maybe some people, I don't know. I've known, a, I've a couple mm-hmm. girls I know have done it and it looks amazing. Yes. It looks, looks so, like, I look like I have implants if you see me naked. Just like fuller. I, but I want, I, yeah, I, I the fat transfer is really interesting to me. I will have enough of it. But you have to take it from somewhere, which then, which I don't know. I guess that's like, like a positive. (laughs) But then, but then at the same time, like you also get used to having a certain figure once you start breastfeeding. Like you get used to having fuller breasts and then all of a sudden they go away and there's like a really weird, like where, which is my real, and then you go back to a real self. Not really. It's like even different than before. Yeah. So it, but then you just, you know, it's. Yeah. I mean, I just, I don't, I think, I feel like you're left, what you're left with after the fact is not what you had before. It's 
a worse version. So you go from being, if you like, and if then you, you have the perspective and the comfort of like yeah. this becomes when you're breastfeeding. I mean, if you do for as long as you know we have, yeah. is you know they you just become you. It's your new body. That's what you. Here's feel. the thing, though. Like guys, when we become moms, like it just changes, mm-hmm. and and like I'm okay with that. Like guess what? My stomach will never be the same. Yeah. It just will never be the same. Like I work out like heavily. I lift weights. I do so many sit ups and. Like, you know, it looks pretty good, but the skin quality will never change. When you, change. like, bend forward and it goes, like, the creping, right? Yes, and, like, I know women that go and do, like, tummy tucks or whatever, which, like, no, I'm no judgment. Like, do whatever you want. But, like, I'd rather have loose skin than, like, a scar from hip to hip. Right. Like, you can't, like, I don't need, like, for what? Like, right. I just, it's just... It's just never going to be like it was before. And I, I have these babies and like I'm fine with it. I, that's that, And going back to the start of our conversation about the the perception that you are supposed to never age, that you're supposed to be this animatronic like superhuman yeah. that never has a wrinkle and never has change in skin quality. And yeah. It's – look, even if you didn't have a kid, your your body – evolves like you're you're just it's what yeah. happens with gravity it's what happens with nature you eat differently you I mean yeah. all of it I don't know I think I do I look better in my 30s though than in my 20s in my opinion when I look back in in my 20s I smoked I would drink I clubbed all the time I ate like McDonald's but aren't you glad 30s, you did all those things too yeah <laughs> my 20s were really fun <laughs> I see I think about that too it's like I, I all the things that you need to do to be just a kid when you're a kid so that when you're an adult you're not the person being like I wish I was at Coachella this week you know oh what I like God. you know what I mean oh my um, God. when you're at home nursing Coachella and, and is like being at a nightclub when all the lights go on Oh God! Like literally, like do you know that Wait, feeling yeah. when you're at the That's, nightclub and the lights go on? You're like, oh, like call Coachella it is night that. blooming it's, mushrooms. It's like the where lights are like, on at the club. They're okay in the fluorescent, like dark lighting, and then you turn the white light on, and they're like these fungus, ah. like horrible things. Um, yeah, that's terrifying. Okay, so let's talk about career a little bit because I feel like you have had such a a wonderful ride and like such an interesting trajectory. And yeah. you said you started as an actress and that was sort of the beginning. And now obviously with Bumble Biz, I feel like yeah. you and and your sister have had such a different um a different last couple years in yeah. terms of not just content creation, but also just a content creation around a very specific thing, which is women coming together and mm-hmm. that friendship element, which I think is something, uh, you know, as someone who loves your Instagram channels and your interaction with each other, it feels like it's um, it's a whole different side of how to support one another and how to have those female dynamics and female relationships come front and center in a business capacity. Yeah. So what's that been like? I mean, you know, so I started out, I'm not going to go through the whole thing and bore you guys with it, but in my 20s, I was really just like an actress for hire, right? And it was good and I was... I was on a television show for like four and a half years and it was good and I was happy to have the job and but like I had no control right I would go to auditions and then I would just like wait and uh, you know did I get it did I not like I wasn't really living I, I don't want to say I wasn't living my full truth but I knew I wasn't living up to my potential right. I just I just knew it and I was happy but there was just something um missing for me and then um around my 30th birthday my sister was like, you know what? My sister was also an actress, but she was had started writing and she was writing um, for Ryan Murphy on one of his shows. And she was like, I have this idea for a show. I really think like, fuck this. Like, let's write our own show. And I was like, okay, okay. Like, you know, so she was like, we need to take control. Like we need, and if no one buys it, that's fine, but let's hunker down. Mm-hmm. Let's, let's, let's just do it. Right. And this was sort of before the television bubble was like had burst, right? Like this was ugh, when did we create Barely Famous? I guess five years ago, um, and we came up with this idea and really put everything else on the back burner. Like no more auditioning. She stopped writing on the TV show she was on. We really like put our eggs in this basket, and we sold the show that we wrote, produced, starred in, cast, did locations. I gave up a bu- I gave up the location budget for. Um, the house for better writers the network wouldn't give us the writers we wanted and I was like we have to have these writers okay fine we can shoot in my house wow. and we'll put the, that budget towards those writers we didn't know actually what we were freaking doing um, it was like guerrilla filmmaking and we created this show that all of a sudden people really responded to and really loved and it put us in this total other category right that felt so nice 
and um in control in control and we also discovered because we never worked together we also discovered that together we were so much stronger and so we did two seasons of this show and you know you don't get much respect as an actress like Mm -hmm. unless you're someone successful if you're just sort of someone that's just coasting along like no one no one cares like you go to these industry events and people ignore you and they don't talk to you it's all about like unless you have a hit or something interesting like you're just invisible and all of a sudden with this show we start people started taking us seriously as show creators and executives and producers and you know when Bumble came along they had just hired us to come speak on a panel they sort of pulled like a bunch of their users and a bunch of the users said we'd love to meet the Fosters and we came and we spoke at the Bumble Hive in New York City and spoke for like two hours to their users and there was just a real synergy between us and the users because Aaron and I are we're real people we're relatable we're very honest about our insecurities and our struggles and we're sort of have our whole show was about pulling the curtain back right and that's how we live our lives like we're very honest so anyways long story short um Whitney the founder was like our users love you I now love you I love her so much she's so, amazing she's you so got cool. do you know she's not even 30 yet I, that's a whole it, it's other conversation unfathomable to that me that she's not I even can't 30 think about it. she's just, like 28 years old it's crazy it's beyond she's <laughs> such a baller and but she feels wise like very she's wise, so wise. Yeah. and we landed on being heads of creative for the company and you know like to, in layman's terms it's kind of like curating the vibe of the company and they were launching bumble biz which was another arm of bumble date and they wanted us to sort of be at the forefront of it and listen we had no experience in tech right. we had <laughs> no experience at all we were just like actress show creator writers But we had, she really jived with our ideas and we knew we could move the needle for them. We just knew. We knew we had access to like other women that were good for Bumble and, and it just sort of, it it worked. And when we started Bumble, I think was at like 15 million active users now, two years later, like 65 million active users in 150 countries, not because of us. I'm not saying it's because of us, but a lot's happened in two years. And now there's Bumble BFF, which is... You know, it used to be so you you wouldn't say, oh, yeah, I met him on Bumble or I met her on Bumble. Like, you know, like my husband or my girlfriend or my boyfriend. And now it just it sort of like rolls off your tongue. You're like, oh, yeah, we met online. Like, that's just that's just how people meet right. now. And I think we're heading there for friendship as well. Because if you think about it, not everybody is as blessed as us to have our circle of girlfriends that we grew up with or that we would ever. Some people, it's harder to make friends. And I don't know about you guys, but my girlfriends are my lifeline. I mean, I, I am, they, they are something for me that I can't even explain. I mean, yes, my, my marriage is important and the most important, but my girlfriends without them, I am like, uh, or under, I'm like a shell of a human, yeah, you know? I mean, it's, it's so important. And, um, so there's now Bumble Biz, Bumble Date and Bumble BFF. And What's, Bumble Biz is for business connections. So Bumble networking? Biz is business connections. It's like, <laughs> like kind of like LinkedIn. Like a LinkedIn for women. Um, now you can search the field, the particular field you're you're interested in. That wasn't an option at first, and it's working. I mean, I, people are are finding jobs here. They're finding internships. Wow. They're creating friendships that that then turn into starting a company right. together. And. And we're also motivated. We're motivated in a different way. Like being an entrepreneur is more accessible now. Like I know for me, like going to all these tech conferences through Bumble, it's given me the the confidence to want to go and start my own thing, which I never would have had before. I would have never had that confidence. I would have been like, well, why should I do that? Or I can't do that. I have so no experience. And I everything is about confidence though I mean there's no reason why I can't go start something right now and you and you and you it's like but we it I think the lack of confidence holds us back and so it's interesting it being in this new sort of lane and you can now do it all right it used to be like you if you were a movie actress you had to be a movie actress if you went and did tv your career's over right if you did a commercial you were really done or if you're now you're like if you're not writing a book doing a podcast, uh, do, teaching seminars, like you're not working, you're not doing anything and you're not judged for it anymore. You're celebrated. And it's a really exciting time, not just for women, but men too, for all of us. Like, I think we're talking so much about women and, and whatever, but we don't have to, 
we don't have to shit on men to feel the power that we need to feel. Mm -hmm. I think there's a, there's a lot of man hating mm -hmm. right now. Mm -hmm. And and that's certainly not what Bumble stands for. Bumble is inclusive to everybody. We're just giving women a platform that um, hasn't really existed before. But we love men at Bumble. <laughs> and something I've also talked about, you guys, is, you know, in, in my years um, working, my most horrible experiences have been with women. They haven't been with men. Women have made me feel more shitty about myself by far, like far over men. And I don't know if it's because, I mean, I know for me that if a man says something terrible to me, I'm kind of like, oh, fuck him, like whatever. If a woman says something ter terrible to me, it deeply affects because me. Because you're like, we're the sisterhood. Like, what's it wrong with you? It deeply affects me in a way that, that it doesn't when yeah. when a man doesn't I think we have to be really really hypersensitive about that because we are so powerful with each other and and I don't know I mean listen I'm guilty of it too like I'll I'll sometimes have a thought right I'll see a girl on Instagram or something and I'll have a thought and I'll be like oh she's so annoying like what does she even like what does she even do or whatever it'll just be like a thought and I'll go like oh my God, like what is wrong with me? I'm just hating on her because she's promoting her book. And you know what? Deep down, I probably want to write a book, but I'm too scared to write a book. So instead of being like, oh, it's so great that she's writing a book, I go like, oh, she's such a loser. Like, yeah. like what does that yeah. even mean? Like that's so The crazy. very small part in ourselves starts to judge other people. I mean, you probably get yeah. it in, in Instagram comments too. Sometimes people write these things to me and I'm like, what's wrong with you? Yeah. So you're like, oh, you know, you just want this or you just say, and I'm like, you know, I, I at one point this woman, I was, I, I think we had recorded mom brain for like a really long day and then I was running to go to the next thing and I was like, I just need a minute. It was like a really, really, really stressful day. I think Alec and I were like arguing over something and I was like, I'm going to literally just like do my like little exercise or whatever that legitimately makes me feel better. I don't know, maybe it doesn't yeah. make everybody feel but it makes me feel better. And I decided to put my phone down. And then I wrote like, this is called I Just Need a Minute or something. I made yeah. something like stupid, like whatever. I come up with, it's not well thought out what I write on Instagram. Yeah. I just write it in the moment. And this woman writes like, yeah, you and your, you know, 600 and whatever thousand followers or whatever whatever it was at the time. And and I looked and I saw that and I'm like, you know, people write me mean things like all the time. But I looked at that and it said like, yogi, yogi uh, Her profile. Doula, like lover, feminist, all these things. And I was like, excuse. No, it's crazy. Excuse me. I mean, and it's one of those things of like, maybe I did need a minute. Why is everybody, why are women always Right, because she's to probably looking at you going like, well, I do yoga. Why don't I, where's my following? Or where, why does my down dog not look like that? Or I don't freaking know. Like women are just haters, not all of them, but like there's just something that, I, I really don't know, well, but you know what? It's interesting. Whenever I click on someone too, like someone will say something awful to me, I'll click on it and be like, a loving mother to Alex and Natasha. I'm like, you're a mother? Like, <laughs> you how do you to. say, how are you this evil? Mm -hmm. I don't understand. It makes me, it actually, I, because I will have that experience, of course. And my thought is like, I just feel bad for you because I feel like you clearly don't have someone who makes you feel loved and supportive. You clearly aren't doing what you want in your life. Like, you're, like, you wouldn't have this kind of vitriol for me if, you were if you felt good like that's just that's not how it works like um and I and I think it's interesting the female dynamic I think I want to think it's because we put so much pressure on ourselves to be so amazing at everything that um seeing other women seem to have it all or like excel in certain areas makes us feel threatened um and I try to put my like male cap on in that when I can in that way of just like this is it's not my job to be perfect at everything. It's not my, and it, by the way, it's not my time to do this right now. Or if I want that, there are ways that I can work to try to have that. It also goes back to what you were saying about it's not a no sum game. There is room for everybody. Right. Yeah. The, People don't have to hate on you two because you have a successful podcast. Go start a podcast. You can have a successful podcast too. <laughs> like, just work at it. I mean, I actually, you know, I don't, that's got to be really hard having a successful podcast. It's, but like, there's no reason why you shouldn't. It's just, just like not riff. a no sum game. There is really room for everybody. You know what it is? It's trying to, it's looking at your own humanity and what makes you tick and then realizing that 
we're so similar. We're all so much more similar than we are different. And then relating that to other people. And I think that's one of the reasons that Mom Brain has done so well is we just talk about like issues that that we all like. Well, that you wish your girlfriends. If you don't already talk about it with your girlfriends, that you wish you would. would. Also, Uh, we do also, people also want to take down people on social media that give the illusion that like life is so perfect. It's like, shut up. Mm -hmm. No, it's not. I don't want to follow you if that's what your social media is. I will unfollow you if you're like, like, you know what I mean? Like, I'm not saying, you know, give us like the gory details, but like portraying your life is like so perfect. It is kind of, I don't know. Like, this just doesn't feel authentic. Before we let you go, which apparently we have to do at some point, which I don't want to do at all. I feel like we didn't even cover anything. I don't. (laughs) That's the crazy part. There's so much more to cover. I know. There's so much. We have to have, like, continuation. We talked about porn. We talked about. We got got to, like, the juice stuff. I want to talk about sisterhood really fast because Mm -hmm. I'm the oldest of four. I have two sisters and a brother. Um, And and you have two little girls. And you're going to have your third girl. I'm going to have three girls and a boy. Oh, my gosh. I just, I think... We've, you know, women, women can be each other's biggest detractors and and pain points, but they can also be each other's biggest advocates and, and assets. And just like, like, I think the reason I have really amazing girlfriends is because I have amazing relationships with my sisters and that like that first relationship really formed that. How do you, how are you going to foster that for your children? And how did you foster it with your sister that you think is something that women can take out and like make part of their friendships? Well, I lo- I missed out on a lot of years that I wish I could take back because the truth is growing up, I really like wanted to be an only child. It's actually a huge bummer that I, I was the oldest. I had two younger sisters and I just, it's weird. I just, I, I didn't appreciate these built-in best friends early on enough. Aaron and I really didn't get close until later in life. What's your age difference with your sisters? Two years, me and Aaron, and two years, okay. uh, me and Jordan. Jordan's a stylist. She lives in New York. Jordan's sort of always lived away. She went to boarding school when she was 14. I think she was like, I just have to get away from this crazy family. You know, we had a, an interesting childhood. You know, my parents got divorced when I was five. My dad, like, right away moved on with somebody else who had children and you sort of find yourself looking at your parent raising other people's children, which is, you know, and it's something I saw on your Instagram, which really made me happy is how you, you seem like you have a really nice relationship with your stepdaughter. Best relationship. And that is amazing because that's not easy for a woman to, it's like, I think it's natural for a woman to sort of like want her own family Mm -hmm. in some sort of way. And I definitely grew up, not close with my stepmom because it was very clear she wanted like her and my dad and her children to be this unit, right? And it's so terrible because a step parent can really be such a fantastic addition to your life. Yeah. And it's um and then I commend it because and it can be the other way. And and I think that's so nice. Like this is not your daughter. This is someone that came into your life as like a fully formed adult and I think that's so amazing and that you you seem like you really treat her the same as you would treat your other children. Yeah, and I mean, that's that amazing. Was, when I went into my relationship with Alec, I have such a respect of the relationship between parent and child. And so I said to him before meeting her, I met her, I don't know, a handful of months into our relationship. And I said, if she's not okay with us, I'm not staying. That's and amazing. it was not just for respect out of them, but it was also, I'm 27 years old and I'm not taking right. on all this evil stepmother drama that I hear from some from some people I'm not cut out for that and fortunately Ireland like I wasn't the next girlfriend after they got divorced yes. and Alec and Kim had been in a good place at that point their yeah. exactly yeah. like there there was so much space so I think that I had a you know timing definitely had a lot going on for us but I also was just respectful yeah. You know what I mean? Like I'm, well, I'm you not coming in be... going. Let me tell you how it's gonna go. Exactly. And like, which I think, unfortunately, I, a lot of women come. I, with that I was coming into disgusting. their family. Yeah. I was coming into their family, so I right. was the new person. Yeah. And that was something that I had to respect. Now, of course, I belong. I belong just now as much as everybody else. But I yeah. really found my footing. And even to this part, you know, when she doesn't want to you know, say things to her parents. She says it to me and I never, you know, meddle or get in the way. And I always have respect for Kim that she is the mother. Yeah. I don't, if, if I, Alec and I got divorced, I wouldn't want some woman to come in and try to parent my kids right. as if yeah. she was number one. Right. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I'm not going to do that the same. Yeah. And Car- Ireland and, and uh, Kim have an amazing relationship. Yeah. Like, why am I going to go in and mess with it? That's amazing. You guys should do like a whole episode talking about just like the step parent. Cause it honestly, it's there, it's, 
it's happening more and more now. Parents are getting divorced younger and meeting other people. And it's such like, it's, it's, it's something that needs to be talked about more because I, it, it really affected who I became. Anyways, so my sisters and I, we were sort of in it together on this journey of dysfunction, really. And, and, and we always say like a sibling is so nice because you can deal with like your crazy parents not alone. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and it's, it's like these built in best friends and to this day there's nobody else I want to win more than my sisters granted like they drive me crazy they push all my buttons we'll get into a fight and I and it's really about like some bullshit I did when I was 15 that they haven't let go Isn't that I mean funny? it's a We're constant check-in it's a constant check-in you know they always felt like I was favored more here and I was got good great like, you know like, there's there's stuff there's stuff there's baggage like we go to therapy with our husbands like we should go to therapy with like our our sisters and our brothers because it's such an important relationship but my relationship with Aaron really changed when I had my daughter because Aaron is and Jordan she's just lives away is the best aunt in the world like I couldn't I couldn't raise my children in in a city that she was not or my mom like they are like it takes a village mm-hmm. And I would not, I'd be, I'd be a complete insane person. Without. Are you scared about when she has kids? I'm scared. I'm scared. My daughter my, is. My <gasps> sisters are the best. They, they love my kids. Like they're, they're like, mm-hmm. I, they true. And I never had that aunt experience because my, yeah. my parents had us almost every five years. So my siblings are much younger and not married yet and don't have kids and all this stuff. So I, I, part of me can't wait to meet their children because I can't wait to love them like an aunt without the responsibility of a parent. But your parents but had kids over 20 years? My my youngest brother's 13 years younger than I am. <gasps> crazy? Same mom and dad? Same mom and dad. It's crazy. It's crazy. Um, but I want to talk to you after this is over because my <laughs> kids are five years apart and I'm yeah. so interested in that. Well, we had similar drama. Similar. I don't know if it's just Aquarius older child but mm-hmm. or just older child period. But I similarly was like, I don't need you. Like, why are you here ruining my like perfect only child life? Mm-hmm. And then we only became close as we got older and had more to relate on because we there was such a huge age gap. But um, and I I probably was not the easiest older sister. And the either. parents are harder on the firstborn in my they opinion. Are. They're like vicious. The young guys. one, they're like, oh, it's fine. Like everything is was, like an excuse for the young one. I'm like, wait, I'm sorry. When did we like decide that the young one is just? But like, the older invincible. one gets to go no. off and like do fun stuff. Like my my I mean I'm not my, really because everything really? is. No, I feel like I had the spyglass on me all the time. No, the first one, like the older one's like the guinea pig. Yeah. The second one, like I'm sure inevitably, like, well, you know, I've said to my daughter, like, you are not getting a phone. You're not getting any of those yeah. things. So you're 14. Blah, blah, blah. She's five sh- now? She's eight. Eight. Oh, she's but, eight. And the other one's three. Okay. But I'm sure the three-year-old will get it at 12. Like, you know, yeah, like, know. you're always sort of they harder beat you on the down. firstborn. They- but I do think that the the five-year age gap is interesting. No, but I worry about when my siblings have kids that they're not going to be able to love my kids the way that they do Oh, anymore. they will. No, no, no. They will. They will. My, no, I but I so. think it changes. No, no, no. My, brother, my brother has my nephew. And I love my nephew as much as I love my children. And he Aww. loves my children as much as, like, every single day. He's texting me, sending me more pictures. Because he wants to see, like, the non-Instagram pictures. Yeah. He's like, but I inevitably, you don't spend as much time no. anymore. Like, right now, Aaron's picking up my daughter from school. Aww. Like, if she had her own child, like, she probably wouldn't be able to do that. Right. Like, I think it does change. I don't think the love changes. Mm-hmm. But the t- my 8-year-old's really freaked out about it. My 8-year-old keeps saying, like, I'm mom, I just I don't want Aaron to have kids. I don't want Aaron to have kids. Like, Because they're, they're, they're so that close. close. Well, yeah, so and my nice. mom too. I mean, it's you guys. How could we do this without help? I look at people I, that don't have. I mean, it's such a luxury to a be able to have like a nanny. I know. Like this is such a foreign concept anywhere in the world, other than like where we live, right? Like this is not how our parents. This is not how I grew up, and it's such a luxury to not only have like that, but then to have your family. I mean. Uh, when I like Sundays I go mentally insane because I'm alone with the kids and I'm like wait a minute this is this is the real world like you know I'm so used to having help around that I, it's whereas like when it's there all the time and doesn't go away it's 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 a lot it's but it makes such it so much luxury, more fun though. to get to do it with other adults to get oh, to yeah, especially absolutely. when they're diffu- your sisters diffuses, and your mother it diffuses you get along with. the situation a little bit uh you can find you can find me <laughs> you can find me at home in a robe no uh you can find me on instagram which is just my name sarah foster and twitter which i actually am active on twitter uh sarah m foster 